we're here in St. Helena Sound, South Carolina. We are catching and tagging large coastal sharks as part of ongoing uh, research surveys to track abundance of these sharks in our waters. All right, we're gonna put them out. If any of these balls start taking off and moving, we've got a big shark on board. In the late 1980s and early 90s, sharks were rapidly overfished, and that's primarily driven by the shark fin market overseas. Since then, we've been enacting uh, legislation and monitoring populations to try to get some of the species that were heavily overfished back to healthy populations. Tell me if you see something swimming at the surface there, Gavin. Yeah. It's that's, moving. That's, that's probably a tiger shark. Yeah, it's moving. This is probably a good size one, too. Probably. It's pulling them quick. Yeah. 11 feet. You think? I didn't look that big. Yeah, he's got a tail on him. Can you hold it, Bobby? That's a bigger shark than I thought. When we capture a large shark, we want to get them back in the water quickly. It's a lot safer for us and for the shark. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, girl. Easy. We're going to roll her. One, two, three. Come on, girl. Bobby, see if you can lift your head just a little. We're going to measure the shark. 3.8 meters. We're going to take a small piece of tissue from the dorsal fin for genetic analysis. Should be enough there. We're going to have to cut this shark loose. Yeah, we got it. We got it. There she goes. Woo! There she goes, yeah. Woo! That's worth a high five. When we're trying to conserve any group of organisms, we need to understand baselines. We need to understand what a healthy population is, when a population is compromised or has been overfished. Genetics helps us with this a lot. We take that little sample of tissue and we chop it up with a razor blade and then extract the DNA from it and look for particular genes. If we compare a small population of sharks with just a few individuals, with a large population of sharks with many individuals, we know that each individual has DNA. And so, each piece of DNA in every individual accumulates mutations. And if we compare this to a large population which has many individuals, each of which accumulates mutation just as it does in the small population, we can see that collectively a large population has more mutations, more genetic variability than does a small population. And we can measure the variability in populations using DNA sequencing to give us an idea about how small or large a population of sharks is. When we sequence DNA from many species of sharks, we find that for several of them, their populations seem to be just fine. But for some species, genetic information suggests that their population sizes should be much larger than they actually are. So this is a sandbar shark, and this is actually a uh, one-year-old sandbar shark. This was born last year. Their population was overfished, and these guys are very slow growing. They take about 15 years to mature, and when they do mature, 
Uh, they only produce pups every three years. So at this point, they're on a rebound plan, which will put them back to a healthy population in about 80 years. There's a little sandbar. I would definitely say, having dealt with a lot of sharks, that they're not out to get you. I have no problem swimming right where we're catching and tagging our sharks. We know that the oceans would be a lot less healthy without sharks in them. So here in the United States, we're doing a really good job of managing our shark populations, and most of them are either on their way to recovering or even recovered. That's a good thing because our primary goal is making sure these sharks are here for generations and generations to come.